I'm Chester Carter, who owns a local business here in Stony Creek, Carter's Torn and Repair, and uh, one of the active members of the Grassroots Coalition Alliance of the No Tolls. Behind me is two young uh, students that this summer helped paint all these yellow trailers that we painted to uh, display throughout the state. And tonight is the first grass uh, uh, informational meeting by the uh, VDOT organization. And we uh, come to protest and put our message to the governor that this is the wrong issue. All right, good. Well, first of all, I wanted to uh, just say thank you for coming out this evening to support Virginia Toll Free 95 and its effort to stop I-95 tolling in Virginia. My name is Rex Davis, and I would like to thank the leadership of Sussex. I would also like to thank uh, Superintendent of Schools out here, Dr. Harris, for opening up his chapter up this evening. been all over the place. Not only what you see here right behind you, that's his work and his creation, but he has just done a phenomenal job from being at the racetrack to being on the Today Show. Uh, where else have you been? Doing? Northern Virginia, Alexandria. Chester has done it all. He's worked tirelessly and for his efforts we are very, very appreciative. We've got people from North Carolina here in the crowd tonight. We really, really appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy holiday schedule to be here with us this evening. Tonight, we have a mission. Tonight, it's about the tolls. We must put our individual differences aside at this time. And we have that one mission, and that is to go inside and let VDOT know that we are not in favor of tolling I-95. with a, a person that's coming to work with you and that person has experienced a four dollar toll to get to his or her place of employment and will experience a four dollar toll leaving his or her place of employment to go home to their family it's unacceptable it's unacceptable we are tonight this crowd which you represent you represent 23 localities 13 business associations five planning and economic development organizations and additionally, you represent the 6,200 individuals that have signed the online petition. No tolls! 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 No against the opposition to I-95 this afternoon. The tolls on I-95, folks, this is a serious issue that no one can take lightly and everybody can play a vital part. As Rex said, no tolls on I-95. That's why we're here tonight, this afternoon. We must keep contacting our governor, Governor McDonald. Let them know that we have a voice. Let them know that you have a voice. And let him know your concerns, how this affects I-95 in Stony Creek, Virginia. It doesn't make sense to me. So, what, what, what we, need, we need to do, we need to look for other alternatives to fund transportation. Tolls are not our only option. That's my job in returning to Richmond. So what am I asking you? The deal is not done, the deal is not over. No tolls on I-95. I'm asking you and everyone here for your continuous support, continuous fighting, because together we can make a difference. But we have to make sure our voice is heard in Richmond, and we must make sure our voice is heard in Washington. <laughs> How we all doing? All right, um, to begin with, I've been in this sort of from the get-go, and I've hauled this trailer to a lot of places, went to the Democratic National Convention with it. Secret Service kept turning me around. I kept going back and trying to get the message through. And that's the way we ought to be. We just keep right on pursuing it, pursuing it. Don't let go. Don't let them kick us down. Even though everybody keeps saying they're going to do it anyway. 
We're not going to let them do it. Am I right? address a crowd which is so friendly. You look so friendly, I only wish the governor had come tonight. Where is the governor? Where is he? I better not say it too loud. I see some state police back there. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. It's great. You, have, you are voting right now against the tolls, and you're voting by your presence, so you ought to give yourself a big hand. One reason they can't give you a good answer is when you ask them a question. Why in the world do you want to put a toll in one of the poorest states, poorest areas in the state of Virginia? You ask them that, they won't have an answer. Ask them why they didn't put the toll, the proposed toll booth, in Caroline County. Funny thing is, in Caroline County, they have 50,000 more cars a day than they do down here at exit 20, around 24. Think how much more money that would give them. But that story is not the one I want to tell. I want to tell the story about all of you. There is no fairness whatsoever in each of us having to pay an extra $8 to go shopping in Colonial Heights. It is not fair for all of us to have to pay an extra eight dollars to receive medical attention in Richmond. It's not fair for me or any of you to visit your children or any other relatives in Richmond and have to pay eight dollars to do it. All I want is fairness. I want the same fair and equitable position for me as I do the person who lives in Caroline County. Will they, will they have to pay $8 to go to Richmond? No. Will we have to pay $8 to go to Richmond? Yes. And that's what we're saying to the governor. No. We do not want to pay it. And the reason we don't want to pay it, it's not fair. It is just not fair. Get ready, rest of Virginia. They're going to be tolling every interstate in the state. And what what is it to me? What is it to you? It's just not fair. Thank you very much. Thank Chester, for a couple of comments, quick comments. Uh, Chester, is, like I said, he's spearheaded our grassroots effort. And um, he's going to have offer a few brief comments, and then we can head inside. So remember. Let your voice be heard. Let's hear it one more time. No toll. No toll. No toll. All right, Chester. I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to tell you a little story and challenge every one of y'all to get involved. Because I got cast in this thing by my conscience. I've been on this exit for 32 years. And I have been a friendly competitor with Mr. Davis, and we've all cherished the moment of our community growing. And I remember before 95 was built, and I used to drive a tractor, and we had wrecks on 301, and 95 came, and it was like a piece of fresh air that our community started living. And we had a lot of in business. And then I came to the county meeting down here and Mr. Estes came down here and said, well, you going to get told whether you like it or not. And I didn't like what I hear. And I knew that for 32 years, my lifeblood of my community was going to die like a grape on a vine that provoked moisture. And so these two little boys right here broke down and I didn't know what Mr. Davis and them was doing. But they had all them signs made. And I went to the park over there and got these two little lads and their brother to give them something to do. And we were going to make the Arlington National Cemetery in Stony Creek for tolls and put our headstone according to what the mayor says that we need to do. And we said no tolls. 
And it ended up on it ended up on this thing a big part. issue. It's a lifeblood issue. We don't want no cut rate, toll rate for us. We don't want no toll. No toll. No toll. No toll. No toll. So I challenge you to motivate yourself. Do what Mayor Adams says. Call that number because everybody does a little bit. We look in the mirror every morning. I can do this. I can do this. We can do this. It's about we. It ain't I. It ain't him. It's us. So please, go in there and tell them to the governor, we vote you in office. We want you to fairly represent us. We don't want to be dumped on. But if you put a toll on 460 and a toll on 95, you might well put a nail in our coffin. We don't want to come from Southside Virginia. We appreciate you coming. We thank every one of y'all for being here. Please join the fight. Grassroots America is here. It starts now. And let's go to Washington and tell them what? No! no, no. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'm here tonight at Stony Creek uh, on the rally to try to keep the tolls off of 95. Uh, the community and the whole around Greensville County, the adjacent counties need to step to the plate. It's time to wake up. We don't need tolls on 95. The legislation in Richmond needs to take a look and put in a tax. I'd rather see a tax. That way everybody in the state would pay for these roads. The sad part about it, when they put a toll, your best roads are going to Northern Virginia. They're not coming to little old Emporia, Rangeville County. We need to put our foot down and say, listen, Governor, we need to have tax and not toll in Virginia to help our highways. We definitely need the money for highways, but we don't need a toll road that will penalize our local people going back and forth to the doctors, uh, shopping in Colonial Heights, whatever. It's not fair. We're having to pay to carry the roads for Northern Virginia. All right, these fair. two folks are here at the rally, and his name is? Dick Poole. And? Kathy Poole. If these tolls are implemented, how is that going to impact you personally? Well, I live uh, at right at mile post uh, 20, Three, so very close to the proposed toll plaza. I'm most concerned about the congestion on 301. We live right off 301. That's become the most dangerous part of my drive every day. The infrastructure is just not in place to handle the, the now, volume of traffic. At exit 23, is that two lane or four lane on 301? Two lane. Two lane. Two yeah, lane. that would be dangerous. Absolutely. How would this impact you going back and forth to work? It would impact me every single day. I work in Petersburg, so it would be $8 a day for me. So you're against the tolls, right? Yes. Hi, my name is George Crollo, and um, these are some of the proposed discount plans. Go ahead and talk for, about them. For the toll. Um, so the first option, well, first off, if you live in any of these areas, Greenville, Sussex, Prince George, City of Emporia, you will be able to qualify for one of these three plans. And all three of these plans are very preliminary, and we're very interested in hearing the public's feedback tonight on which plan they like. And if they don't like any three of these, we'd love to hear their thoughts on that too, and they can fill out the comment form and give us their thoughts on that. So it's really, we're trying to get people's thoughts on what's going on and which plans they like. So these are three very early draft options. Um, of what potentials could be. Um, the first option is a 65 cent flat rate. So instead of paying $4, every time you go, you pay 65 cents. And that is for two axle? Two axle vehicles. So and that's a car, that's small a car. pickup. Exactly, so truck, the small truck, car, or motorcycle. And if you have a truck, it's a little different over there, but it's the same general idea, but similar, similar discount plan. The, the second option is the minimum use plan. And the way the minimum use plan works is for your first five trips for that month, you would pay the full fare being four dollars. And then every trip after that would be 25 cents only. So that's the second option. And the third option would be 55 cents every time you go up and down. Um, and then there's a six month $30 charge. So it's a membership. So you pay the membership fee every six months and then you qualify for the 55 cent one instead. And what these are, these are great savings for 
for the folks, uh, which range basically from about 83% to 38%. Given these, given that you travel, this is if you travel two times per week, this is if you travel 10 times per week. So it's just to give you an idea of the potential savings with these discount plans. What would you like me to Now, about? if somebody's gonna be using the discount plan, Yes. Can they have a sticker on their window so they're not stopping and paying each time? Oh, for sure. So it actually would be registered with your Easy Pass, so you wouldn't ever have to stop at all for it. So an Easy Pass mechanism or sticker would cost how much? So the Easy Pass has an upfront cost, and the woman over there is actually the best woman to speak with the Easy Pass stuff about. Um, she's the Easy Pass expert, and she's from Easy Pass, so she can kind of fill you in on that. But these are the way the plans would work. And this young gal is going to tell us about the Easy Pass system. So what does uh, the equipment or pass cost in order for people to take advantage of the discount plans that are or could be implemented? The way the Easy Pass works is you pay $35 increments. You're prepaying your tolls in advance. So basically you're putting money on your Easy Pass account. And then as you go through the lanes, the toll amount will deduct from that $35 prepaid balance. So you don't get it re-upped and all of a sudden you go through, then what? Then does it well, automatically re-up itself? you can have it automatically repl replenished if you choose to. You, you're not required to. You can just put money as you use it or you can have it automatically replenished. If you just had one easy pass, it would be when your balance went below $10, we would automatically replenish for so another So there would be an easy pass for each vehicle. So a family that's got three would have three different... You're not required to have three different ones. You can interchange your transponder, that's what we call it, between three vehicles as long as those three vehicles are just standard two axle vehicles. So you could get one and switch it between the three vehicles if you like. Well, th th there are several reasons why this is bad. Number one, the mayor and the uh, chairman of the board of supervisors have talked about it not being fair. Number two, if we're a state open for business, why are we erecting a barrier to commerce? Uh, number three, it won't generate nearly enough money to seriously address the problems that VDOT is facing with roads in Virginia. And, and finally, it's just not popular. And at some point, what the citizens want to see happen ought to be acknowledged by our elected officials in Richmond. For those and many other reasons, this is not smart, it's not good, it's not fair, and it's a bad idea whose time has not come. Elton Owen, Jr., uh, own a business with my sister in Jerry, Virginia, right off exit 20. We are adamantly opposed to the tolls. Uh, uh, How's it going to affect your customers? It's going to be tough because we, we, we have a lot of business from up north and all around and if they'll have to pay a toll to come to Jared, you just you don't know what's going to happen. But uh, I think Governor McDonald needs to really rethink this process instead of shoving it down our throats. And I think the uh, most important question is why, are the, why is the government sending all this to Sussex County? And I think the underlying problem is our government is in such shambles right now that uh, they think they can shove everything down our throat. So now, I think now I know that when people need service at your facility, yes. you send somebody to their place of business or home to pick up their vehicle sometimes yes. to deliver. That's got to be pretty costly now that the tolls are involved. Oh, absolutely. I don't think any business realizes the effect that that'll have until this is... I'm Kevin King from Emporia, Virginia, and this is going to affect us by it could possibly shut down the two major employers in uh, Emporia by Toll Brothers in Georgia Pacific because of the cost of transportation to Northern Virginia. Um,
The, um, there are a lot of people here tonight, obviously this is an emotional issue. Not everybody probably will be able to, to speak. Uh, I do have a very specific question before that. Would everyone who is here tonight, who is against the concept of these tolls on I-95, please stand? Bill Collins, former chairman of the Board 
worship by the Sussex County. Uh, I'd like to have you elaborate a little further on the discount toll application. Uh, that safe forest is delivering vials up and down the corridor. And even with the discount, but I didn't discount, man, he could cost him $40 just to go up and come back and make his list. Yeah, so I told him. Uh, if the discount program works as you have described here earlier this evening, uh, what kind of a benefit would it have for that forest or that, that, that small businessman? Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, for yes. the yeah. head of Fresh Shores County, have a business at Fresh Shores County, and have their fleet of vans or whatever they may have registered in Fresh Shores County. And so if that's the case, uh, based on our proposals that we have tonight, that business would be eligible for whatever discount plan uh, we were able to. And so, for example, if they were, if, we, if, uh, if the dis flat discount plan would be the main uh, discount plan proposed, then that fourth, every time they travel, instead of $4 every time for the gantry, they would be paying the 65 cents. And so it would depend on the frequency, but they still would be paying a total of 65 cents each way.